It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All the sports news you need every day in under 20 minutes. Follow Locked On Today, today on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, how's it going, Clipper people? Wow, did we miss you? Yes, we did. me, William the Opinion Updike. And I am still positive, Chuck Mockler. And we're your friendly neighborhood Clippers podcast. Just a couple of best friends and Clipper credential media folks who bring you Clippers news. We're sorry about the break. We've been on a great vacation. (laughs) But boy, do we have an episode lined up for you. Uh, Kicking things off, we're going to be talking about the draft. Mm -hmm. Keon Johnson, uh, the Clippers ended up trading up to take the 21st pick. Uh, also made another acquisition for Jason Preston. So we're going to talk about that in the second segment, sort of uh, about how these picks will move the needle for the Clippers. We're also going to talk a little bit about the Kawhi situation. I think we're all very excited to see how that turns out. And then a lot has been going on around the league. We've got to talk about Nick Batum crushing with the French League. And then the team across the hall made a huge move today. Excited to see how that works out and how it affects the Clippers. Uh, So all that and more coming up right about now. But first, I got to let you know that this episode is brought to you by rockauto.com. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so the Clippers did move up from the 25th pick. Um, They traded with the Knicks to move up to 21 to select Keon Johnson. It was a Detroit second that they threw in. And then the 25th pick, I'm not mad at that at all. Mm, traditionally, we've done very well moving up to take a pick. So. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Keon played one year at Tennessee. Right off the bat, just want to say I'm very excited about Keon Johnson. Um, he's 19 years old, 6'5 guard, averaged 11, 3, and 2.5. And watched, we've only really watched some tape on him. Didn't watch a lot of Tennessee basketball last year, admittedly. No. Um, but the man is a freak athlete. He has a 48-inch vertical, yep. which I think is one of the highest ever measured at the Combine. Um, it, he's, he's good in transition, which you really like to see, especially for this Clippers team that's kind of been lacking in that. But the biggest thing is his defense. He's talked about how he's a defensive first guy, being able to knock down um, open shots around the perimeter after you know he can open things up on the defensive end. I don't know, man. It seems like he's got good two-way potential. I, I might be irrationally excited, but I, I'm really looking forward to seeing him in Summer League. So I, I think it's an interesting pick. Uh, I know a lot of us were sort of expecting a lot out of a guard, or it seems like that's where you were at pre-draft, Definitely, right? Kind yeah. of hoping for a guard that could mm-hmm. kind of move the needle in a positive way with the earlier of these two picks. I like the move for a wing. I think right off the bat, I'm, I'm curious to see how he's going to develop physically yeah. uh, at 6'5", you know, and he is kind of, he's a shooting guard, kind of small forwardish sort of hybrid currently. I think if he, you know, can grow another inch or two, sort of fill out a little bit, uh, I think that he'd be great as some sort of uh, back up wing sort of positionally. Kind of uh, a hybrid guy that the Clippers have been enjoying lately. Yeah, yeah. And we've talked about uh, sort of the need for some wing depth on the second unit for this team. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the biggest road to him being able to get playing time or even development time in that, you know, second or third or or whatever <laughs> yeah. string you want to call it, uh, <laughs> in which he'll be able to get some minutes, uh, is going to be the defensive end. And yeah. if that is you know, even near an NBA ready sort of level, uh, you know, I, I do see a route to him being able to get some minutes. Uh, you know, like you mentioned, freak of an athlete. There yeah. is a high school highlight of him oh, yeah. doing an in-game 360 dunk, which you love to see. Uh, I guess my concerns would be, like I said, the physicality, um, the shooting we splits. Got to talk about that a little bit. Not great. 27 percent uh from three and just i mean it is it is under two attempts per game yeah so but that's got to improve a bit does it (laughs) true because he shot almost 50 percent on his twos yeah which you know uh could be better but uh but a lot of those are not shots yeah exactly (laughs) um front one of his draft profile says he's an elite stopper on the perimeter 
and his size blends nicely with his physicality and attitude on that end of the floor to provide some versatility in defending guards or forwards. And that's what we talked about kind of in that pre-draft pod about anyone who can guard multiple positions is going to be favored by the Clippers. Yeah. And so I like this pick for that for sure. Um, the, the one thing to think about, no more Kenny Atkinson to develop, which kind of sucks. Um, so this is kind of Sean Fine's like first big thing to work on. Yeah. I feel like now the first kind of project. Yeah. Now the big question, does he move the needle for the Clippers in what way? You know what I mean? Cause we talked about this a bit on the drive, but if you pair him with shooters around him, like yeah. we have bent shooters or whatever string he'd be coming in, there's going to be people who are capable shooters. Him being able to jump passing lanes and, you know, be good in transition, especially if you think about him with Terrence Mann and stuff like that. Like, I think he moves the needle a little more than I thought the Clippers pick would. Maybe that's because they've been bad at drafting, but I'm pretty hyped on this pick. Uh, so I've gotten a little bit more excited about this pick too, looking at uh, a lot of Detroit fans were really <laughs> yeah. excited um, <laughs> about Keon Johnson. You know, make of that what you will. But, I, I you know, I think seeing that uh, definitely does excite me. Yet, I mean, defensively, look, I think that's one of the biggest holes on this second unit. Um, yes. And I think that while we did lose a lot of scoring on the second unit and losing Lou Will, there is theoretically at least through there is theoretically three shooters that we could put around Keon Johnson in the second unit as currently yeah, constructed at all times uh so that to me like I mean that does alleviate some of those shooting things um the issue is going to be I, I still think an issue is going to be just some base level of playmaking in an NBA level. Good call. Which thus, Can he move the ball smartly? Yeah, which thus far he has not really been able to do. He has a negative assist to turnover ratio. Yeah. Uh, it's like 2.5 assists per game to 2.6 turnovers, which, you know, once again, he does not need to be a point forward. That's not what <laughs> yeah. I'm advocating for. That's not necessarily what we need. Um, but if he's not going to be able to shoot the ball from deep, he is going to be able to move it to someone who can. Yeah, pick one, yes. right? Like, do what you do well. Um, yeah, not sure how good he's going to be to start, you know, but it's going to be fun to watch. Weird thing, Keon yeah. Johnson's agent, this is from Fly By Night, Justin Russo. Keon Johnson's agent is Aaron Mintz, who is the same agent as Paul George, Reggie Jackson, and Luke Kennard. Weird. So that's interesting. Uh, look, I don't know enough about quite how the agent, like what palm Thing greases works. which yeah. in, the <laughs> old, in, in the old agency shuffle. Um, but hey, I mean, if nothing else, Aaron Mintz seems to have a pretty good eye for talent. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> um, overall, like, what do you, what do we grade this for the Clippers? Uh, I mean, dude, it's TBD for me. That's fair. I'm giving it a, I'm giving it a C plus. I'm going to give it a 10. I'll give it a tentative C. And that's not because of Keon at no. all. Um, it's because there's maybe some other guys I would have preferred, but reading more about Keon and learning more about his game. I think it was Clippers 24 seven who tweeted like the clips got a young guy who has bounce and plays defense and already plays defense. Yeah. And wants to get better on offense. So it's like, what else are you looking for at 21? Yeah, absolutely. I would say, like, currently, as judged today, it, like a, a C. But, I mean, I would say, pending on how Summer League goes, this could be easily upgrade to, like, a B for me. It's going to be a fun uh, pick. With solid potential. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess the only other thing that kind of, you know, I mentioned some of the knocks on Keon as, as a player. The only other thing sort of logistically that I don't love necessarily about the yeah. trade is attaching yet another asset. Yeah. And I think that, you know, History be damned. It has not been great for us, but whatever. Uh, I think the thing that does get a little bit more difficult in losing another second round pick is when you look at what now are the Clippers going to have to attach if they do end up needing to move on from Rajon Rondo. That's a good call. But luckily, they will cross that bridge when they get to it. Hopefully, when they get to it. Uh, coming up. Welcome to the team, Keon, by the way. Welcome yeah, to the team, welcome, Keon. Keon. Shout out, Keon. Coming up, we're going to be breaking down uh, another Clipper, a surprise Clipper pick in Jason Preston, as well as just kind of some roster construction talk and maybe checking in with what's going on with Kawhi. We'll do our best. Coming up right after this. I'm Kevin Ostriker, host of the Locked on Ravens podcast and attention shoppers. We now have taste in the bread aisle, Dave's Killer Bread. That's right, an organic bread that doesn't need three spoonfuls of sriracha jam to delight your taste buds. 
Dave's Killer Bread is a 21 grain salute to the end of boring bread. A brand on a mission to make the most of every loaf, to rid the world of GMOs and artificial ingredients, and plant the seeds of good in all that they bake. But Dave's Killer Bread has done more than raise the bar on bread. In fact, Dave's Killer Bread was built on the belief that second chances can change lives when its founder Dave, the guy with a guitar you see on every loaf, returned to the family bakery after 15 years in prison. Dave took that chance and ended up creating what would become the country's number one organic bread while never forgetting his not-so-easy path. That's why at Dave's Killer Bread, they proudly practice second chance employment, hiring the best person for the job, regardless of criminal background. And by the taste of it, things have worked out rather well. Dave's Killer Bread, bread amplified. Okay, so we're back and we got more draft talk oh, for yeah. you. So the Clippers did end up trading another future second round pick and some cash to, to move up and snag Jason Preston. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about this guy. What, so, what's the deal with Jason Preston? He's a he's a stat stuffer. Okay. Um, he's 6'4", 181. That does sound a little small, and it is kind of another guard type guy, whatever. Uh, played three years at Ohio, University of Ohio. Averaged 15, 7, and 7 for his career. Okay. Which, I love that. Noted as being a good defender for his size, a decent, or excuse me, a good rebounder for his size, a decent defender and shooter, and unselfish to a fault. Ooh, what kind of a fault? I don't know, but I kind of like that. Yeah. I like that, like, the one of the knocks on him is that he maybe moves the ball too much, because um, I think that's an easier problem to fix than the opposite problem. Yeah, yeah, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. He is an interesting trajectory too he did play three years at the university of ohio he went from being kind of like a, a bench player in high school who's averaging something like two points per game oh wow uh he worked on his game went to a prep school wrote most notably for a pistons blog about reggie jackson uh, and um yeah posted clips of himself ended up getting recruited uh that's you know, a cool so story it's, it's a cool Hell story yeah, he, you know he wasn't necessarily like an elite guy in high school right off the bat i mean kind of opposite of that uh and ended up you know three solid years at university of Ohio. these are great you know these are very solid numbers um and you know now in the draft i think that that's kind of cool and i do I regardless of where they're taken i kind of like stories like that yeah so the clippers have done a really good job of drafting good stories recently with jay scrub and now with um um, Jason Preston, you know, he's not a big, which is good. He shot 39% from three on four attempts per game his last season at Ohio. Okay. Which, pretty good. Yeah, you know? I think that's solid. Um, that's, uh, work. I mean, definitely very workable. Yeah, very much workable. Let's get to the point. Does he move the needle for the Clippers? We're also sending another <laughs> Detroit pick <laughs> for this, which is fantastic. So... I'm just gonna say right now, I, I don't see any sort of path in yeah, which he's and this NBA, isn't a knock. I in, in which he's like quite NBA ready for this team. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying like not for any team. Um, but you know, clearly there was some interest there. Uh, they you know they thought they could do something. Um, yeah. I guess the does he move the needle question to me comes back to the guard rotation. Yeah, and right now it is a very very crowded rotation for sure and i think if you look at this being a move towards maybe a move that is coming later down the line yeah do you think maybe one of our other guards is gone i think it's interesting yeah uh, i but, said it was interesting <laughs> but where i'm at right now is that I, I i like the upside love the story if he moves the needle i'm gonna say right now no just because i don't really see where the playing time is coming in yeah, I think he's going to get his reps in in summer league. I think he's going to get his reps in with ACC um, or with Coach Natalie. It's going to be a good time. I'm excited. I like that he does a little bit of everything. You know, these are – the Clippers got guys who – I mean, they definitely know they're hungry after hearing that that Jason Preston story. That makes me really psyched on his, you know, drive and stuff like that. And then Keon, I mean, I'm liking these picks. I really didn't know what to expect out of the 25th pick at the beginning before today started. But I'm happy at 21 and once we got at 33. Are you excited for these picks or are you excited because the Clippers are doing things in general? Uh, let's call it 70-30. <laughs> Not saying which one is No, which. yeah. Um, I like that we didn't take a big, like, yeah, Clipper no, fans I were agree. rioted. Um, I'm hyped. I'm hyped for Summer League now. And we got a good Summer League schedule. We're playing some good teams. 
Um, so welcome to the team, Jason Preston. Also extending this invite, Jason Preston, Keon Johnson, if you want to go to In-N-Out at any point, get at us. Um, now let's shift into technically current Clipper talk. Yes. Which is Kawhi talking. All right. So <laughs> things have been, I mean. Weird? Things Not have been weird. weird. Uh, there hasn't there hasn't been a whole lot of news. And I feel like with Kawhi, no news is good news. No news is news. Yes, uh, but <laughs> you uh, are right. But apparently, uh, things are not as certain for the Clippers that Kawhi is resigning. Now, this is coming from one very specific report. Yeah, Mark Stein. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mark Stein has reported that it is not concrete that he is returning to the Clippers. We have heard other rumors, of course, that the Mavs and the Heat are making plays for Kawhi. I, I just want to throw this out there, like <laughs> off the bat. Of course, they are. Yeah, who's not what, trying what to... What team wouldn't try to make a play yeah. for Kawhi? Who's not trying to convince him to come? Unless you need to win next year yeah. or bust. For sure. That's um, a good point. So I, I think that those things make sense. Look, the Stein thing, uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly what his sources are, but he doesn't have an in with Larry Frank in this front office. Yeah. So... I, More of a Woj guy from everything that you've seen historically with Lawrence Frank. Yes. And when it comes to Kawhi, there's Chris Hayes. That's a whole different thing. Yeah. But it's not coming from Mark Stein ever. Not usually. Not that Clippers. I'm immediately remembering right now. Yeah. So I still think it's just... He's he's still pretty much expected to just re-sign. For how long? We don't know. Yeah. So here here's my thing on, on this. Uh, I think doomsday scenario right Kawhi True. doesn't Kawhi doesn't resign right he leaves um it sucks we're all bummed it out. sucks <laughs> but my thing is is like I still feel like we can go to sleep at night or put the feather in our cap or whatever of I feel as though this team and this franchise did everything they possibly mm -hmm. could to not only get this superstar but get him to stay yeah um, make him happy yeah Make carte blanche for players like obviously training regimens and amount of time between the end of the game and the post game presser anything that was wanted the clippers gave them which as as they should yeah yeah though i mean the only thing that wasn't changed was like some of the health and training staff right uh which you know he has his own so i don't know that it was necessarily even like one of his requests i if, they, if he would have been like we need a new head trainer and the Clippers said no, I would have been like, that is absolutely insane. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I just have a very hard time thinking that, you know, any any request like that sort of would have been denied. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, like, my, at the end of the day, my thing is, I still think that he's going to come here. I think that we've made the best pitch to him. Yeah. I still think, you know, you look at what this team did last year. That, to me, is not fluky. Absolutely not. No. Uh, and, and, and I think I, I am struggling to see a better core that he could get put around than this team. A hundred percent. And he's still close to home. So there you go. And if the Clippers do resign Kawhi, like kind of Reggie and Batum, the rest of the roster fill-in is going to be boring, which is a good thing. Yeah. Like we're going to yeah, be looking yeah. for vet men guys. One of the reasons I love we didn't draft a big is because we can cut someone like Daniel Oturu, who is not an NBA ready player. Like, there were times when we had less than 10 guys and he's getting DNPs and we only had one center on the team. So he doesn't feel like he's NBA ready yet. You can cut him. You can pick up a vet minimum center who's better than any big man they would have drafted kind of already from their spots for a third center. I mean, I I, I, right? I think like, so. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's going to be boring, but I'm happy that it'll be boring when he resigns. Um, and hopefully when everybody else resigns. All in all, I mean, things are pretty good for the Clips right now. Yeah, like I, I mean, draft went good. We just got to wait on Kawhi, which is annoying. We're not going to pretend like it's not a little irksome just as a fan. Yeah, as a fan for sure. But, you know, we got to keep in mind we are. <laughs> this team is still 15 other rostered guys. For sure. And like we've made the best pitch to the one. Uh, and now we got to do our best to keep the core intact of everyone else. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not seeing any big swings right now for the Clippers. Um but, hey, who knows? Things can change on the dime. They absolutely can. Coming up, we're going to be checking in on Nick Batum uh, and his time with uh, Le Bleu in the French national team for the Olympics, as well as what the hell was going on with the team across the hall today. But first, we got to give a shout-out to Bilt Bar. Ooh. Did you know that Bilt Bar has so many delicious flavors? There's something for everybody. When you, uh, when you talk to a Bilt Bar fan, they are passionate about their faves, which I love. 
If you don't know the Built Bar flavors, you're missing out on salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate for the fancy people out there, double chocolate, mint brownie, raspberry, cherry barcia, and of course, coconut. My personal flavor uh, is cookies and cream. I'm a little old school. It's very nice. Um, if you haven't tried all the flavors, you can get a mixed box, which is clutch. Ooh. Sometimes I will switch it up every now and then. You'll get two of each of the nine flavors, which is fantastic. And not only are Built Bar flavors the best tasting, they're healthy too. They got 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180, only four to five grams of sugar, and only four to five grams net carbs. Amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. Order today and get the grasshopper cookie or raspberry or whatever you like. Built Bar is the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team, which is sick. Go to BuiltBar.com. Use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 50% off your next order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 50% off at BuiltBar.com. Okay, and we're back with shavings. Uh, leaving things off, I mean, Clipper fan favorite. Oh, my God. Nico Bactoon. Man, he is crushing it with the French national team. Um, doing a bit of everything, helping them out, unsurprisingly, if you've watched the uh, Batum play. Also, I'm so psyched for the Batum battalion next season. Oh, yeah. It's going to come back. Got to put the vibes out there. So... Are we worried uh, as fans, followers of the team, right. people talk about the team, about Nico Batum, who did seem perhaps a little bit gassed uh, at the end of the season. Yes. Um, not his fault, just the, not judging by his performance necessarily, but the playing time would indicate that something it was going down, on there. down, um, down, down. When we needed him more and more and more. Yes. Uh, so got to imagine that he was managing something there. Maybe though it was just sort of rest related and kind of a precaution. Do you worry about him playing so much for the French national team? It makes me just wonder more what was happening in the playoffs. Yes. It seems like he's healthy for the, the French team. Like, there hasn't been an indication for anything I read or really watched that he's kind of playing gimpy or something like that. Maybe he just needed the rest because there was a small break in between the Olympics, kind of. Um, it just more has me kind of scratching my head. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it was like a Ty Lu decision to not play Nick Batum. I can't imagine that <laughs> after, yeah, after, after what he did through the other two rounds. So Yeah, but I hope the, I hope the good play keeps up. Like... You know, knock on wood, he stays 100% ready to go through the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, and he keeps playing well. I like it. You know, like, he's in. he played so much more last season compared to the season before, and now he's stacking this on here. This just might be one of those things where it's like you just keep the body going. So I, I think that that is one approach, and I do think that um, – I, I think that that might actually be the right move. Um, you know, if if he is believing in his body, I think, you know – why not go for it? Why not kind of keep yeah. that rolling? Um, and guys play different for their national team. That's the, other, that's, <laughs> that's the other thing too, right? Like the play is different. The minutes load is different. Um, the style is different. It's He was asked, he was really tasked to do a lot for this team. <laughs> yeah, he was. Um, even before Kawhi went down. Uh, and certainly once Kawhi went down, you know, he became just like one of the most valuable pieces that we had on the floor at any given time. So I, I think it's different, is what I gotta say. It's different. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll respect that. But overall, I would say, man, I you know, there's not many players in the league that I more wish good things for than Nico Batum. So <laughs> for sure. And now uh, wrapping this thing up, we got to close this out talking about um, the team across the hall. Yes. Who were linked with adding Buddy Healed, mm -hmm. which had me a lot more scared than what they ended up with, and they ended up adding Russell Westbrook. But jettisoned basically all of their good shooters. Yeah, they, they, got, they, rid they of, got rid of Trez, not one of their good shooters, obviously. But KCP, yeah, uh, who's an okay shooter, okay. but did it imp make a defensive improvement? Yeah, it kind of did some dirty work, which is good. But this still feels like Clips and Five, right? Like, yes. What What is their offense going to look like when you just put everyone in the paint yeah. and say, "Shoot, Russ," because <laughs> Russ needs the ball in his hands. Russ is not an off-ball guy. No, there's not a lot that he has to offer off-ball. And I mean, like, yes, you can cite some of his, like, improved corner shooting stuff. But, like, if that's the option on the floor, like, if he's just getting left by a defender, is that... Which he will be. Like, is that that much um, of a benefit... You know, when you're still very kind of, when you're kind of locked in there with a, a kind of 
players who have some similar styles. I do think a pro of the whole thing is that some of the point guard duties got to be taken off LeBron. They need to do that. Like they, they should have done that more <laughs> this season. Uh, they weren't able to um, necessarily, you know, I, I do think Schroeder was a good pick, but it's, I, it's a weird move. It's a very bizarre move that I'm kind of having trouble wrapping my head around. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, I think that there could be flashes of it where it looks great regular so like the my idea is like the regular season there's going to be some great highlights and stuff like that we'll probably finish a top four seed but then it's going to get like you're going to get into playoff basketball yeah <laughs> where like teams play good defense yeah so I, I i definitely am curious to see how that one how that one is going to work out um yeah. but luckily we get patrick beverly versus russell westbrook at least four times a season now, guaranteed. Oh, that's a great time. This is going to be... Has this upped, like, the rivalry? Is there, like... No, not just their rivalry. Yeah. I mean, like, the Lakers-Clippers thing. Well, because now, now it's like, like Russ is coming step? back to California. Yeah. We got two California guys. Pat Bev and Westbrook don't like each other. Yeah, this might kick it into a new... Into a new realm. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be a good time. Still, though, Clips and five, maybe four, depending on who has home court. Um... Happy to be back with y'all, everybody. Thank y'all so much. Next episode, there's going to be some internet issues where we're at. We're in Alaska. It's very remote. Um, we're actually recording this outside in a hut right now. <laughs> um, it's either going to be Monday or Tuesday. Regardless, send your questions into at Locked on Clips. We're going to answer them on the next show. And we will report on whatever else happens to you now and then in Clipperland. Definitely going to dive in to see how the new guys fit. We thank y'all so much. Will, where can these fantastic listeners tell their friends to listen to us? You can check us out on iTunes or the podcast app. We're also on Google Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Stitcher. We're on Deezer. We're on Amazon Music. And as always, you can tell your smart speaker to play Locked On Clippers. Hey, we are Locked On Clippers. We're not coming at you five days a week currently in the <laughs> offseason, but we will be there for you whenever news mm -hmm. is breaking Thank you all so much for listening. I've been Positive Chuck Mockler. And I am William the Opinion Updike. We appreciate you. This episode is brought to you by Spotify Greenroom. Have you ever listened to a podcast like this one and you wanted to bring up your own point or just chat with other people that are listening at the same time? Well, let me tell you about Spotify Greenroom. This is the first social audio platform made just for sports fans. The app is free to download, and once you're in, you can talk with us, other fans, athletes, insiders in real time about your favorite sport or team. Download the app, currently available on iOS devices, Create a profile, link your Twitter, join one of the groups for the latest league updates, and then you'll see us there. Spotify Greenroom, changing the way we talk sports.